Did you upgrade your older apps to NativeScript 6 yet? That's what we're going to be doing today. So a number of you have asked me, how do you upgrade an older NativeScript project to NativeScript 6? NativeScript 6 brings a whole lot of changes with it, including Webpack only builds. So there is no more old workflow where you have the option of using Webpack or not using Webpack, you have to use Webpack, which is a good thing. But with that comes a number of changes that you might need to make in your applications to get everything working. Luckily, the CLI comes with a nice migrate command. So I have an old app here. Well, old is relative. I last updated it in March of this year, 2019, and it's using NativeScript version 5.2. We're gonna hop from that to NativeScript 6. By the way, this app is something we build in the NativeScript Core Pro course on nativescripting.com. And I'm gonna be updating that course momentarily, including a bunch of additions that are gonna be really cool based on the feedback that I received from you folks. But the first step is to update that app. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to start out with this application here, and this is the RPS tracker, and it's written in NativeScript Core. This is what the app looks like. We build this app together in the NativeScript Core Pro course on nativescripting.com. So this is the app that's currently sitting at version 5.2 of the NativeScript runtimes and the TNS core modules is also at 5.2. Okay, so this is even behind my version 5.4 of NativeScript CLI that I have installed. So let's take a look at that. I have TNS version and currently I have 5.4 installed. So I'm going to upgrade NativeScript CLI on my machine and then we're going to see how that'll affect the application and we're going to upgrade the app. So let's take a look at what branch we're on right here. We're on master and I'm going to start a new branch just for the upgrade so I can keep those separate. So here I'm going to say git checkout dash B and I'm going to give it the name of the new branch TNS six. Okay, now we're on the new branch. Now let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Now Visual Studio Code is smart enough that it knows about branches. Uh, what I'm going to do here is in package.json, I'm just going to delete these two right here. These are the runtimes for version 5.2 and 5.2.0. I'm just going to delete those two and this will give me a change that I can commit. So let's just do a test here. So I'm going to commit that and I'm going to go ahead and do a push. And this will ask me the branch TNS6 has no upstream branch. That means it's not in my GitHub repository. And this asks, would you like to publish it? So I'm going to say, OK. And now this branch is published and I can keep working on this branch. Let's go through the process of upgrading. I'm going to go back out here to the terminal and I'm going to install the new version of native script, which is native script six sudo npm install dash G. So it's a global installation native script. It's going to require my password and it's going to go ahead and install native script six. OK, so hopefully that worked. Let's just quickly check the version and we're on 6.0.2. Great. So the new NativeScript CLI version six has a way that you can upgrade all your dependencies with the migrate command. For example, if we look at package.json, we have TNS core modules that needs to be updated and the runtimes, which I've already deleted. All we need to worry about is this TNS core modules reference here, which is 5.2. I'm not going to do that manually. I'm going to try the migrate command. So TNS migrate. And by the way, I am working in that project directory right here. So let's see what it's doing clean auto generated files, start dependencies migration, updated TNS core modules to compatible version, TNS platform declarations. That's pretty cool. And what else is it doing? Oh, it's doing a bunch of plugins too. Wow. I didn't even know that it was going to do all that stuff. Well, I hope that works because that's a lot of updates. That's not manual. It's automated. This is done. Let's take a look at what it did. All right. So we have TypeScript that got updated. TNS platform declarations was updated. Core modules and I guess the data form and the side drawer UI components also got updated. I also saw native script localized get updated. So hopefully that'll work as well. All right, let's go back to the terminal. The next step is uh, I'm going to delete the current platforms folder and I'm going to also delete the node modules folder just so we can start from fresh and also the hooks directory. I'm going to delete those three. This will let me have a fresh clean start. Now I'm going to run the TNS install command. By the way, all these CLI commands are available in the documentation. I don't normally use all these commands, so I'm not too familiar with it, but I am looking at the documentation as I'm doing this. Let me know down in the comments below if you're interested in learning more about the NativeScript CLI and all the different commands that are available there. All right, so the installation went through. 
And um, I already had Webpack here, Webpack config. If you didn't already have Webpack installed, that TNS install command will ask you if you want to switch to the Webpack workflow. But since I already had Webpack config here, it didn't ask me that. All right, let's move on. I'm going to take a look at my code here. Now, typically, uh, when you are compiling your application, the TypeScript code is going to be compiled down to JavaScript code. And those JavaScript files would sit next to the TypeScript files. Well, if you're using Webpack, that's not going to be the case anymore. So what you would need to do if, if you're upgrading your own applications and you have those JavaScript files sitting next to the TypeScript files is you're going to need to delete all your JavaScript files. That's not a problem for me here because I've just downloaded this from my GitHub repo, which didn't have the JavaScript files in the first place. So go through your project and delete all the JavaScript files that are generated. So be careful, though. Don't delete all the JavaScript files because some of them are necessary, like if you have testing configuration for Karma or webpack config.js. That's also not something you want to delete. So only the generated files. And the reason we're removing those is because Webpack is going to keep those files in a separate place in the build directory. All right, I'm going to go ahead and kick this off to see what kind of errors we might get. Hopefully, keeping my fingers crossed, this will work. So back at the terminal, I'm going to say TNS run iOS. And this should use the Webpack process automatically. All right, platform iOS successfully added, version 6.0.1. All right, let's take a look here. File changes detected. There we go. Okay, this is Webpack. And let's see, we have an error. And it's a TypeScript error, which I'm a little surprised to see. Got four arguments instead of two. We'll check that out in a moment. All right, Webpack compilation complete. Watching for file changes. All right, so there's some more stuff here. And it looks like we got a bunch of errors and we don't have the app running. All right, so here it looks like we got an error and it's saying that utils.ios getter is deprecated. So let's go check that out. I'm going to go ahead and search for utils.ios.getter and there we are. Looks like our status bar utils is using that. For now, I'm going to go ahead and comment this out just so it's not getting in the way. I'll come back to that later on. So when I save that, it should have automatically restarted the build process. And yes, it did in fact do that. And my app starts up. Well, that's good news. So there's a problem with the status bar, and that's probably has to do with the colors here. This color should be white on the login page. So you can actually see the status bar, but it's actually black here. And that's probably what this code was doing if memory serves me right. Yes, so that's UI status bar style, light content, and here we're tapping into the native code. But I'm pretty happy that the app is actually running, so that's good. Now I do have a server running back here. That's another project called RPS API. It's a project that runs the back end in Node and Express to go along with this application. So when I tap log in, it's gonna talk to that server that's running locally, and it should log me in and bring me to the backlog page. Okay, and there we go. So now this app is upgraded to native script 6. It was a lot less painful than I imagined it would be. And I might find a couple of ticking time bombs in here. I would just need to go through this app and make sure that everything is working fine. Oh, there is one example of a problem right there. When I tap on add, it should open up a modal dialog and my modal dialog is not opening up for some reason. So I'm going to need to troubleshoot this a little bit. But this is a good start because the app is actually running. So this will give me a bit of a springboard to start debugging in the rest of the application. I can see that a couple of things are working that have been automatically upgraded, including this side drawer, which is a NativeScript Pro UI component, and the form, the NativeScript data form. This allows me to select different types, statuses. We have a stepper component here. We have a priority. Now this looks a little bit different, so I'm gonna need to take a look at that as well. But at least my color changer is working here for this segmented bar control. Let's take a look at tasks. I can enter new tasks. And on the chit chat window, I can enter comments here as well. Great, let's see if I can delete this item. Yes. All right, there is another modal dialogue and that's this assignee right here. So if I tap on that, this should be bringing up a list of assignees that I can reassign this item to and it's not doing that. And that's related to the modal dialogue. I'll have to dig further into that and fix that up. But overall, I think this process went pretty smoothly. 
I didn't go from a very old version of native script. I went only from version 5.2. So it's not a far jump for me. And that's the benefit of keeping things a little bit up to date. One step at a time. I did skip version 5.4, which introduced some Webpack features, but the jump wasn't terrible. And especially with that TNS migrate command, that helped me out a lot because I didn't have to go through here and migrate each one of these things manually. All right, so that process wasn't too bad. I'm glad it went pretty smoothly i'm ready to update this course hopefully your process will be just as smooth using the migrate command but of course depending on where you are in your native script project you might have been using an older version that needs a little bit more work there is a nice article by todd anglin he just recently went through the upgrade process and he had an older app and i'm going to link to that down below in the description this article goes through a few more details, things that didn't apply to my app because mine was a little bit newer, but there's some really good stuff in this article. I'll link to it down below if you're upgrading from an older version. All right, folks, I will see you next time.